gave them credit for, because they've got a very modest, a very small. Mr. Deputy Speaker, there's no member of the executive present. The house is not in order. It must be shut down immediately. Well, Standing orders are very clear. There's no member of the executive present, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'll just refer to the clerk. I'll call the clerk. There's no member of the executive present, Mr. Deputy Speaker. He wasn't here, Mr. Deputy Speaker. He was not here. Last time this happened, Alexander Downer went to the men's room. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, point of order. I made a point of order several moments ago. There was no member of the executive present. He was outside. The House should have been shut down at that moment. At that very moment, Mr. Deputy Speaker, you I, can't buy time to I, allow the member to wander back into the House. You were not here. I, you were outside. Everybody the member saw for, it. The you were not present. You wandered away. The member for Marne will be seated for a second. I have referred to the clerk. The clerk advised me to continue with proceedings. I call the member for Marne. Point of order. There was no member of the executive present. It was very clear. We all saw him outside. He was not in the chamber. He cannot now claim he was magically here the whole the, time. The mem member for McMahon will be seated again. I have referred to the clerk. The clerk has advised me to continue with proceedings as if. Respect for the clerk. I did I've... not make the point of order to the clerk. I made it to you. You yes. should have ruled on my point of order at that moment. And I, and you did not. The member you for gave the honourable member seated. time to wander back into the chamber when he was the not member physically for the present. The will be seated. I have made. I did seek advice, and I have made my ruling. Deputy Speaker, point of order. Uh, Leader of op uh, Manager of Office in your business. One of the most serious parts of our entire system of how this House operates is that we have representative government. That means, unlike the systems in many other countries, the executive must be present when the House is sitting. Now, the last thing we want to do is not have an MPI. But the reality is, if there was a moment here when there was no member of the executive present in the House, then it is your obligation to collapse the chamber because the government did not turn up. Government backbenchers are not technically part of the government as far as the standing orders are concerned. Only members of the executive form the government. If we had a moment today when the House sat where no member of the executive of the Australian government was present, then it is your personal responsibility in that chair to collapse the House because we do not have a parliament if we don't have a government willing to show. The manager of opposition business, I take your point of order. I refer to the clerk and I have made my ruling. I call the member for McMahon. The manager of opposition business, I refer to standing order on page 262 of the standard practice. Sorry, standard practice. Sorry, the absence of a minister it does state that it is, of course, desirable from the government's point of view and expected by members that there should be a member present able to react with authority on behalf of the government to any unexpected development. So, while it's desirable, I have referred to the clerk and I have made my ruling. I call the member for McMahon. Yes, the manager for opposition business. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Deputy Speaker, Deputy, Deputy Speaker, to the point of order. Manager, for, I call the opposition manager for opposition business. Okay, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'd simply ask you to read to the end of the paragraph which you quoted, which refers to your predecessors on an occasion. This, this happens very rarely, ringing the bells 
to secure a minister's attendance, which means stopping the parliament. Now, you chose to allow the parliament to continue without someone present. That ought not to have happened. Well, I also refer the manager of opposition business to the statement there that a short absence of a minister may go unremarked. I call the Assistant Minister to the Treasurer. Well, thanks uh, very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. You've clearly uh, made a ruling, and unless uh, the Leader of Opposition, uh, the the Leader of Opposition Business uh, wants to continue to argue the point of the dispatch box. I think the MPI must continue. I, I call the Manager of Opposition Business. I, I, I simply ask what that was. He, he, didn't, he didn't raise a point of order. He didn't seek indulgence. You simply gave him the call during someone else's time. If you're not willing to chair the House— I, I refer the— I will, I will repeat my ruling that I referred to the clerk. I've called it and I call the member for McMahon if he wants to continue with the MPI. Well, what an incompetent government, Mr Speaker. House duty is not that complicated, Mr Spe Deputy Speaker. You sit in a chair and when you're not here, you admit you weren't here. This is a minister who couldn't even admit he wasn't here. Couldn't even admit it. Couldn't even have the decency and the honour to say sorry. I got it wrong. I forgot to sit in the chair, Mr. Deputy Speaker. That was such a complicated task I had at hand. I didn't know what to do. He says it all about his government. One job, Michael, over here. This is one of the economic team. No wonder. No wonder the economic plan of the government is failing, Mr. Deputy Speaker. One of the government's economic team, one of the so-called brain trusts, can't even get house duty right. And that that's what we see more and more is the fact that this government is incompetent at every level. No wonder Pauline Hanson's running the show, Mr Deputy Speaker. Now, as I was saying before, I was interrupted by the absence of a government minister, Mr Deputy Speaker. Before, as I was saying, I was I confess, I was surprised when the government allegedly got a deal with uh, Pauline Hanson's One Nation Party uh, to pass the big business tax cuts for the price of a small apprenticeship program. It turns out I should have been surprised because it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. They had billions of dollars worth of the deals. They just won't tell us what they are. And I call the assistant minister to the chair. Deputy Speaker.